What is up, everyone? Willkommen for our Deutsch listeners. Welcome to another episode of the Nerdball Fantasy Football Show. I am your humble host, dendrologist specializing in the conservation of the endangered Robert Woods and astronaut aboard the Pit State Moon Expedition, Pete Rogers. And I am joined by fellow nerds, the duck father and runner-up on the great Russell Wilson cooking show, resident old man Clark Barnes, and a devout follower of the Anthony Lynn running back gospel and queen bee of the Austin Eckler hive, the ginger woodsman, Nick Butterford. Guys, how are we doing today? Doing great, Pete. Good, Pete. How are you? Well, I'm going to be honest, Nick. I'm not great, and it's mostly due to you. Uh, a listener reached out to me and uh, reminded me that three weeks ago, I made a wheel bet with you in regards to Chris Godwin. Uh, when we were doing we were doing a panic worry scale index uh, checkup on Chris Godwin. Yeah, and you I said, remember this. You said Chris Godwin would be a wide receiver 30 over the two week span. And I was like, ah, I'll, t- you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take you up on that just to spice the show up. Oh. Little did I know Antonio Brown was going to suddenly disappear. And Chris Godwin was going to be the wide receiver three during that time, averaging like 140 yards and two touchdowns uh, per game over those two weeks. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so I do have a wheel to spin. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, so I will. I, I, we've updated the wheel. We have some new, some new punishments on this wheel. Um, we have, we have shotgun a white claw. That's, <laughs> that, that's on there. Uh, a it's spoon, not that bad. A spoonful a of great sriracha. way to get a little, a great way to get a buzz a lot for of the carbs. game. Get, get without a lot of carbs. You know, uh, a tequila suicide. That would be awful. Pete, did you rejigger the wheel to just so that you could have a cocktail during the show? Today? I mean, I might have. I mean, let's be honest. I was like, it is seven o'clock on a Monday night. Oh, what else am I oh gonna here's do? have a tall frosty oh. pilsner. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Have Clark and Nick buy you a nice bourbon. What? Oh I my like, God. I like the idea of this is like, you have some sort of agreement with Becca where you won't drink while she's pregnant, but you're like, babe, I but have a wheel. Like, said it. Wheel. Oh, darn it. This is why it's so important to control the wheel. Then you don't have to really worry about your bets. Right. So, right. Well, we still have one minute stand up routine is on there because that's a classic. Oh, God. Let's cross our fingers for that. And then, uh, and then our final one is uh, at the beginning of next week's show. If, I, if it lands on this, you put, I'll put duct tape on my, uh, on my legs and then have to pull it off at the end of the show. So get a good, a good leg waxing. That's right. Um, so, I guess, uh, I guess we'll start the show. So you can't blink. Sorry. Go <laughs> no, just do this do the wheel. All right. So with the wheel, so I'll spin. I'll we'll start the show with a wheel spin. And uh, what does that say? Duct tape leg hair. Oh, well, that's <laughs> excellent. Not what I wanted. I literally loaded it with drinking ones, and I get to remove my leg hair. Um, so that will. Uh, I mean, I guess I could go. Well, maybe at some point I'll go get duct tape, or I'll just do it next week. We'll see. Let's do like a short. You can just post it on the web. We have okay. fans, according to earlier in the show now. So I'm I excited. mean, we do, and and some of them are from Germany. So uh, mm-hmm. so shout out to them. I know the Germans love watching leg hair get removed. Uh, all right, week nine <laughs> fantasy football. Let's start with some props and flops. Nick, start us off. Okay, uh, my props are the Jets and the Colts, and that's just everybody involved. Last week, I think it was Clark who uh, kind of laid the wood on the, the Jets as a whole, but uh, like last week's, uh, or rather that was week eight, but week nine's Thursday Night Football game was the stuff of fantasy football dreams. Um, I think it was a good reminder that s- sometimes folks can get a little bit scared of of using players from bad teams and you you shouldn't like when the, when the situation is right just start them all because it's i was 45 to 30 like there's so many fantasy points to be had in that one especially in a week where all of the games that we thought were going to be like fantasy masterpieces weren't bills at jaguars cowboys at broncos uh what was the other one where there was just a dud for the entire or to a certain extent the chiefs at packers like there, there were, there were plenty of games that everyone was like, oh yeah, fire these people up. It's going to be amazing. Everyone's going to have great games. Um, and so it's always nice to have one where, uh, where that does come to fruition and you do get just an absolute crusher of a game from Jonathan Taylor, which 
I have to, I have to lay some, sh- not shade, but I have to like kind of thank the fantasy gods. I played against Jonathan Taylor this week, Jonathan Taylor and Michael Pittman and sleeper app was like, after that game was like, you have a 10% chance of winning this week. And what do you know? I won because this week was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it was a shit show and, and uh, all of his stars did not do anything. So, but yes, uh, props to the uh, Jets and Colts for making a fun fantasy viable game on Thursday night, nonetheless. Yeah, it turns out the only thing the Jets needed to do to be a somewhat functioning offense was get down to their third string quarterback. Was not play their number two overall pick at quarterback. Uh, yeah, because Mike White coming back, his uh, forearm, forearm is feeling good. Who who knew? This is a what word to the wise for all those like pers- prospective GMs out there. Just like the you know Nick has been really on it. A lot of teams been on it. You know the the zero RB movement or just RBs aren't worth a first roll overall first round pick. I think we're seeing with the Jets, QBs aren't worth a first round pick either. Really, you should you shouldn't draft a quarterback. I mean Russell Wilson, third round pick. I just. Tom Brady, sixth round. Tom Brady, sixth round pick. I mean, we're yeah. Don't draft a quarterback in the first round. That's I feel like that has been proven time and time again. Uh, Clark, what are your props this week? Uh, My props for for Marquise Brown. He has slowly uh, or sneakily moved into the top ten wide receivers in PPR. Uh, And I have a lot of Marquise Brown, and I guess I just haven't been paying attention. And the perception in my head, I believe, because of two incredibly high-profile bad games, is that he's having a bad year because of all the drops. But he's just not. He is kicking ass in his third year with Lamar Jackson. Uh, I think he's like the number seven wide receiver overall, eight in points per game PPR. He is just absolutely murdering people despite dropping so many. Yeah. Yeah, he's He's a monster. He's been having a, a great year. And I'm, I'm trying to bring up uh, Nerdball stats and information is working tirelessly behind the scenes because Marquise Brown, yeah, 8.5 neck rating, which is our, our consistency metric, consistency and efficiency. And Marquise Brown, like one of, of wide receivers who've played at least seven games, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he's fifth, fifth among wide receivers who've played at least seven games in neck ratings, which means that he's being, I mean, he's putting up great numbers and he's doing those great numbers on a very consistent basis, which is something we didn't really expect from specifically Marquise Brown and the Ravens passing game as a whole. We didn't expect them to be this, this explosive. Uh, my props this week, I want to give props. I obviously we all love good heartfelt narratives and stories here. And I, I want to give props to James Conner who has been really good this year as in fantasy as like a, that goal line dependable back who just averaging like a touchdown a game because when the Cardinals get into the red zone, they just give it to James Conner. Um, but I loved seeing when I didn't love seeing Chase Edmonds get injured and leave, but when Chase Edmonds did get injured and left, James Conner came in and wasn't just that goal line back. He was absolutely dominant against the 49ers, 96 yards on the ground on 21 touches, two touchdowns, and then 77 yards and a touchdown through the air. Uh, I just, you know, as someone who has gone through a lot in his life and his NFL career, I have to give props to James Conner for, for put showing out uh, and, and being the best running back in fantasy this week. Like that was something that I don't think a lot of people expected and it's, we will obviously touch on it more when we get into the news, but this could be this level might not be the norm, but this amount of, of, of fantasy success from James Conner might be, might be the norm uh, moving forward for, uh, for James Conner managers. I think it'll be hard to keep him out of the top 12 this yeah. week rating or rankings wise. Great. Well, uh, when we got, when we get to chase Edmonds, my question was going to be for Nick, where do you rank uh, James Conner moving forward? So now I'll have to think of a new question off the top of my head. <laughs> that, so stay tuned. that was adorable. Uh, let's do flops. Uh, I'll start us off with flops and we'll go backwards. Um, I am just having, I guess, some vendetta growing against Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni and I are, are and I are beefing hardcore. Uh, last week, again, I had beef because Kenneth Gainwell, who is siphoning touches from Miles Sanders, uh, when having the opportunity to be the RB one in Philly, Nick Sirianni was like, "No, nah, we're gonna we're gonna give it to Boston Scott, and we're gonna split it with Jordan Howard." And I was like, "Okay, all right, I accept my defeat. My apologies, Kenneth Gainwell. Maybe that's just he's a rookie. He's just your pass catcher, whatever that situation might be." So this week, in another plus matchup against the Chargers, I was like. 
Boston Scott. We saw Boston Scott get all the starting work. He had 12 plus, you know, carries. He was played over, I think like 45% of the snaps for the Eagles back in week uh, eight. So I was like, Boston Scott, lock it in and let's ride. Well, of course, Nick Sirianni gives me the middle finger a la Eli Manning. And, uh, and it's jo- Jordan Howard, who is suddenly the RB1 in Philly, seeing over 50% of the snaps and over 55% of the uh, running back uh, touches share. And it's just like, no, Boston Scott got nothing. In fact, even just to throw salt on the wound, Kenneth Gainwell scored a touchdown. So he ultimately ended with more fantasy points than Boston Scott. Um, and so uh, Nick Sirianni is definitely out to get me. And uh, for this reason expressly, I will drop uh boston scott and i will never touch the eagles backfield again this season so flops to uh nick seriani and my relationship going down the shitter i think you need to we need energy and then you have to put the the square peg in the round hole and we're a high character this and is we, nick seriani put impression. the plant there in the go. ground <laughs> and it will grow and when it grows, it'll look like Jordan Howard because Jordan Howard is my RB1. <laughs> Fuck all of you. He is such a weird dude. I like, don't, I don't. He kind of takes the yes man thing to a different level because he, like, he doesn't ever, he's like Brick Tamlin when he talks. Like, he doesn't say anything. And, <laughs> and I, I think Jeff Lurie is just is thrilled <laughs> with what he got in Nick Sirianni. Oh, man. Yeah. Anyways. Maybe I'm sure this, I mean, I'm sure this week too, it's like Jordan Howard. Okay, great. I'm going to trust Jordan Howard because the Eagles have another plus matchup against the Denver Broncos who've been giving up rushing yards uh, also at will. It won't be Jordan Howard. It's going to be Kenneth Gainwell. Who's going to now rush for 80 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Clark, who are you giving uh, flops to? Well, flops this week are just the Kansas city chiefs offense in general. It's been three really tough weeks. So under 300 yards for Patrick Mahomes against not, tough defenses against Tennessee, New York, uh, sorry, the New Jersey Giants and Green Bay, uh, super high profile game last week, just did not look good, eked out 13 points against the Packers and didn't really look good doing it. Uh, Two touchdowns, two picks, and we're, while overall Patrick Mahomes is doing kind of fine and fantasy, he's, it's been a rough stretch and Kansas City is kind of you're kind of running out of time to figure it out and turn it around. Yeah. This is, of course, happening the year that I spent up for Patrick Mahomes uh, in fantasy. Yeah, and hopefully, hopefully Clyde Edwards Hilaire will come back soon. Uh, I think me and one other guy on Twitter still believe in Clyde Edwards Hilaire, <laughs> but I think that's about it. <laughs> At least your boy Travis Kelsey got a touchdown this week, Clark. Yeah, picked it over under on one for Travis <laughs> yes, Kelsey, what I keep doing. I, uh, I, I got a very, very mean look from Becca because when Travis Kelsey caught that touchdown, I was like, yes. And she was not pleased, but I was rooting for you, Clark, because you had the, you had the plus five over for uh, Travis Kelsey catching a touchdown. And I was like, he did it. Thank you. Thank so, you. It was worth it. Something I put my, I put my marriage so on the line like, for you, Clark. This offense is so weird. Uh, ben Baldwin was tweeting about this today where the Chiefs are fourth ever in first downs gained on first downs, like like the rate at which one does it, like this awesome. this season's Kansas City team. So I, I if you're you know tra- trade deadlines are coming up here, but I, I think that we should be targeting Kansas City players. Now I don't know like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I'm going to have to give long looks to exactly what it is Darrell Williams has been doing over the last few weeks, but I'm not high on, on CEH. Uh, but if people are panicking on Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey, like n- now's the, or Patrick Mahomes, now's the time. I, there's a, a dynasty league I'm in where this guy like frantically was trying to get rid of Mahomes and he ended up doing it. And I think it's going to be a really kind of bad move, but um, yeah, buy, buy KC guys if you can. Especially in Dynasty, I like that call a lot because even if Patrick Mahomes kind of just has a dud season, like even if there's the rest of this, you know, he, if he's like kind of a middling art QB1 for the rest of the year, and that's not super helpful in redraft, but like we have seen enough 
I guess I would, I would break in favor of what we've seen Patrick Mahomes be rather than what Patrick Mahomes maybe is right now in terms of what his dynasty prospects are going to be. So uh, if you can get Patrick Mahomes, like this is probably the only time in his career, you will be able to dr- trade for Patrick Mahomes uh, in dynasty leagues. So yeah, I just, just for the record, I agree a hundred percent. Like, I think I said this four weeks ago when we were worried about Kansas city, like I'm still going to bet on yeah. them being, very good still and not having been and i hate this not having been figured out because you can't you can't figure out the best tight end best quarterback and fastest wide receiver like there's no figuring it out so yeah yeah eventually it'll all click into place and when it does they'll be back to their their dominant ways there's our props and flops uh for week what nine was that so let's move on to the news i don't think i quite flopped around there pete you are Probably right, Nick. And, and by probably, I mean, certainly. What was your flop? Daniel Jones. Uh, I was a, a moron. This is more of a, just a shame on you, Nick. I, uh, I, <laughs> I tinkered my way out of starting Kirk Cousins in a league that matters. Um, and uh, Daniel Jones, I, it, it's very strange. The, the Giants perhaps trying to take advantage of the chaos going on in, in Las Vegas uh, decided to just like ride Devonte Booker and, and Booker's always had great usage in uh, playing in relief of Saquon Barkley. But uh, yeah, this <sighs> Daniel Jones, man, I, I like, how did you, how did you not four for 17 on the ground? And I, I don't know. Don't, don't trust Jason Garrett. I learning trust a Jason of Garrett like, who gave Darius Tony one target. Riddle me that Batman. Yeah, that was bizarre, and I don't. He played fifty five percent of the snaps, one target for nine yards. It's it seemed as though they they decided to uh, like like play as as turnover free as possible and just assume that the Raiders would self destruct. Kyle Rudolph led the team in targets with five. Yeah, uh, shout out to you, Clark. But like I, all of yeah, Clark's three, boys came to play in Week Nine. <laughs> just an extremely disappointing. Uh, showing all around for the Giants. Yeah, uh, this is an odd one. So I feel like when Daniel Jones was drafted, I had never seen such unity in the draft community about what a horrible pick it was. Like, you think everybody was on the Giants for picking Kadarius Tony early this year. Mm. If you could just remember how everyone was sure Daniel Jones would be a gigantic joke when he was drafted. And he has turned out to be okay. I, I'm not saying he's a world beater or anything, but it is not as bad as people expected. And the reason I'm giving him such a compliment is he's managing to do this with basically no supporting cast and Jason Garrett as his offensive coordinator. So for fantasy and everything that you said about him is absolutely true. I just feel compelled to say something nice because like he is way outperforming expectations. Uh, and Speaking of all of my guys doing well this week, I am in DFS wars with the great Heath Caps and a bunch of other wonderful people. And uh, it is for charity. So Nerdball basically just is donating my uh, entry fee. <laughs> but in this crazy mixed up world, I got second this week. At a, like, And that, Dark that should indicate how dumb the week was, is that my <laughs> DFS team actually did really well. You managed to create like an equal. So I laughed when you said that you were complimenting Daniel Jones because you're basically like, yeah, he doesn't trip on his own penis when he's walking around. And then like you leveled an equal compliment at yourself. <laughs> like I yeah. dumb old me got second. No, Clark, you're good at this. Don't be so mean to yourself. You can be mean to Daniel Jones, but don't be mean to yourself. Thanks, Nick. There we go. Now let's get into the news. All right, we start off as we alluded to and talk about James Conner. Chase Edmonds left the game, the Cardinals 49ers game early with a high ankle sprain, and that has been diagnosed, and he is likely out three to four weeks. Probably will go get put on IR uh, and make that official. I already asked Nick what uh, he sees for James Conner moving forward. It seems like Nick has a hard time keeping him out of his RB1 ranks. Yeah, yep. The uh, he's, he's getting the usage that he, that he and Chase Edmonds were splitting. Um, and there's a couple teams, you know, four teams on by this week. So, yeah, I, I think he'll – I mean, maybe he'll be RB10, but I, I think he'll probably be a running back one. Yeah, and I think 
even long term, if you're the Cardinals, uh, they are sitting pretty as far as win loss record goes. Uh, maybe if things crater and get really out of hand, they try to rush Edmonds back. Um, mm-hmm. But I think you just feed James Conner and uh, maybe a little more from this. You maybe a little more from you on this later. Maybe, possibly. I don't know. Uh, also, what do you guys feel about Eno Benjamin as someone to uh, to potentially target off waivers? Uh, he had yeah. nine carries for 39 yards and a touchdown, uh, but a lot of that kind of coming in, you know, the the Cardinals were able to very eff- effectively run the ball on the 49ers. I don't know if that's going to be true moving forward. You know, Benjamin, a former Matt Waldman favorite, if I am not mistaken, I have been waiting on Benjamin for a couple of seasons now in some super deep dynasty leagues i was thinking that benjamin was going to somehow take over this backfield before the cardinals signed james connor so if i had the roster spot to spare i would definitely pick up benjamin because it's not like connor has a a fantastic history of being able to you know put up with the full workload for a full season yeah uh, i don't think that he's particularly good but you don't have to be as a running back and you don't, you definitely don't have to be as a running back in this offense. So I think he should be added. Awesome. All right, let's move on in the news. Uh, Two injuries came out of the bills losing in glorious fashion to the Jaguars. Um, Trevor Lawrence had a low ankle sprain uh, against Buffalo, but that doesn't seem to be doing too much to him. He seems like he will be ready for week 10. Um, But the injury to take note, at least in my opinion, is Zach Moss left the game with a head injury uh, against the Jaguars. And with him out, Devin Singletary stepped into basically not only a full workload in the backfield as a, as a rusher, but also as a pass catcher. And he saw his most targets. I think he saw like eight or nine targets um, after having seen a high of five uh, in this past. And this couldn't have come out a better time. I mean, you never root for injuries, obviously. But if Zach Moss can't play in week 10, the bills are going up against the jets and the jets can't stop a running back to save their damn lives. Uh, Devin Singletary on, on sleeper leagues right now is 63% rostered. And I'm sure that means he's probably hovering around 50, maybe even below 50 on ESPN and Yahoo leagues. So if he's available in your league and, and Zach Moss is going to be out for week 10, he seems like a must add and start uh, given the matchup. And given the fact that we saw Singletary step into that huge workload, against the Jaguars, even in a negative game script um, with, with Moss on the sideline. Yeah, this is another frustrating backfield with two really talented running backs, meaning neither one was really worth starting, and now one's going to be out. So, yep, absolutely. In terms of uh, this matchup, the Jets are someone – the Jets and the Bengals are two teams that we've been highlighting in the rundown because they are both – Uh, very bad at stopping running backs in the passing game. As of today, the Jets are number two, or actually, excuse me, tied with the Bengals. Uh, Eight running back receptions per game allowed, tied for most in the NFL. And their 76.9 running back receiving yards per game is number one in the NFL. So uh, great time to start a guy who can play in the passing game and will have the full workload to himself like Devin Singletary. Yeah. Um, we had some players miss week nine with injuries before, uh, we even had kickoff Kyler Murray and Deandre Hopkins were both out, uh, still recovering and nursing an injury. And then Tua sounds like he could have played if the game was more, or I guess if the dolphins weren't one and seven, um, but they sat him down. Jacoby Brissett managed to come in and get the win. Clark, do any of these week nine absences, absences worry about, worry you moving forward? No, I, I ended up, uh, going out before the start of the games and started to uh, over Sam Darnold as my second QB. Oh. So I missed out on a big three and a half points. That I, <laughs> I was going to say that, that probably might've actually helped you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, obviously Kyler Murray being out really changes things. Colt, Colt McCoy came in and played pretty well. Um, I cannot get behind Jacoby Brissett long-term. Uh, they still, they still did enough to beat the Texans, which is not saying much, but really want to see Tua back in there. I thought, I, I feel like Tua is a better player than he's getting credit for. Uh, so, yeah, I really hope that he's able to come back for week 10. Yeah. Yeah, uh, me too, because like you just said, Jacoby Brissett is very, very bad. Uh, props to the guys hey. who got it done in the uh, in the Arizona passing game 
And that was one that we like really tried to parse in, uh, in the rundown. And I, I actually hadn't really looked at the usage <clears throat> there, but uh, tip of the cap to uh, Josh Norris of uh, underdog. He, he called Antoine Wesley. I, I thought he'd be the, the number three receiver, but I didn't realize he was going to play like a full-time role. And he did, he held yeah. it down as, as a full-time guy. And I think that that's someone who we can look at again uh, this week. If DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins is out, but like Christian Kirk, uh, yeah. if you got him, you, you got to start him because yeah. he, he can play his, his issue has only ever been other people on the roster, not his own ability. Uh, you also love to see Jalen Waddle. 10 plus targets in three out of the last four games and including the game with Jacoby Brissett still saw 10 targets, eight catches, 83 yards. Jalen Waddle is locking in wide receiver two. You put him in your starting lineup and you forget about it. All right. Two final points in the news. Uh, some transactions that have occurred since we've last talked, the Raiders signed Deshaun Jackson. Uh, Deshaun Jackson was released by the Rams when they couldn't get a deal traded uh, trade deal in place. And then Raiders obviously are looking for, wide receiver help in that speed element back in their offense with, uh, with Henry Ruggs's whole uh, off field issues coming to light or occurring um, and him being out of the league. Now uh, Clark, I know you've been a long fan of Deshaun Jackson. Do you feel like D can have flex value in Vegas or is he nothing more as like a, a deep league flyer that you can take a risk on, but really he's probably not going to give you enough solid week to week uh, production. Yeah, I mean, the, I am zero excited about this after the first week or two with the Rams. I had realized that I had been duped by Deshaun Jackson in fantasy again. I mean, decent move for the Raiders. They did need a wide receiver, but this is the kind of move that just reminds us why we can't have anything nice. Yeah, that is true. Anything to add, Nick? Uh, no, I would not be trying to... <laughs> in in absurdly deep formats, yeah. you can go ahead and try to roster him, but I'm, I'm not taking him seriously as a uh, someone who like, oh, this is the week I should start to Sean Jackson. Cool. This is this is a portend of things to come for Odell Beckham Jr. There is a dark cloud over wide receivers moving in the league. Well, what a transition from Clark Barnes because the final news bullets and yes, Odell did get his release from Cleveland. It happened today. Monday. Um, and so he will go through waivers. Obviously we've already heard some teams will not be putting a waiver in for Odell. Uh, most notably the lions who have the first waiver pick. And also Kyle Shanahan has said that the 49ers will not be putting in a waiver claim for Odell. Nick is having his fingers, his toes, his ankles, his knees, every part of his body crossed that Odell signs lands with the Seahawks. And so that he can watch DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett and, uh, and Odell pass uh, run block for Chris Carson's 30 touches. That's next yeah. Time. If Chris Carson plays this season. Um, I, so there was that report that indicated that like, he actually wants to play in Seattle, which is something that you I mean, hear from sense. receivers from time to time. I, how? Well, if I were Odell Beckham, I am like, I want to go to a team that's going to contend with a quarterback who can get me the football with regularity Seems like Russell Wilson can do all of those things. Who and he is returning this week against the Packers. I, man, I mean, I, I can see how one might arrive at that conclusion, but um, they are. I'll, I'll check as I'm talking about this, but I believe that they are. Uh, I don't agree. I don't. I agree with you. That I think it's a terrible idea, but I, I, I can see Odell's line of thinking of like if I am joining. Russell Wilson, who throws one of the most beautiful deep balls in the NFL, and I'm teamed up with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Like defenses can't cover the three of us. What we're going to eat now from a from a realistic standpoint, Pete Carroll is not going to let Russell Wilson throw the ball over 15 times a game. So what's the point? Yeah, uh, Seattle's dead last in the NFL with 55.2 plays per game. That's over three plays fewer than the next closest team. Love it. Um, and I mean that's like league median is 63 and a half like they're that's all eight offensive plays fear that's a gulf um anywho in terms of where it would actually be fun to see them i mean i actually i, I thought it would be funny to fire off a few fake ones like cleveland or the giants like let's make it weird um 
Uh, can you imagine another receiver in uh, in New York and or if uh, Odell actually went back to? to I just Cleveland? yeah, I just that's, want that's... Cleveland to claim him off waivers and be like, sucks to suck, Odell. So I think this is dangerous because of who well Odell is and who his dad is, but um, Atlanta could be interesting. I think Atlanta would be interesting. We don't know when Calvin. It would definitely it would be a homecoming. Back. No, no, but New Orleans it, would be a homecoming. New Orleans would be a homecoming. Okay. Right, because he yeah, went to and, and Do you want to take the mic? I mean, because New Orleans would also I mean, New, be sick. Yeah, New Orleans, I think, would also be a, a really good a good destination for him. I, I just have a, like, from a fantasy standpoint, I think Odell, Odell can get open. We've seen that. The, the 11 minutes of Odell getting open was on full display of that. And so, like, he needs to go, like... Atlanta, we saw Matt Ryan play really well last week. Atlanta makes a ton of sense. I would really like that. That from a fantasy standpoint is great. Matt Ryan, I can trust him to get the, I'm not trusting Trevor Simeon or Taysom Hill to effing get the ball to Odell Beckham. So I don't want him in New Orleans. It makes a ton of sense. And it's a move that I think Sean Payton would certainly want to make. They tried to, I mean, there was already reports coming out that they tried to trade for him at the deadline and a deal just didn't come to fruition. Um, But I would, I want to make sure Odell is going to a team with a quarterback who can actually get him the football when he is open. Clark, do you have a do you have a destination that makes sense for you? No. Yeah, Detroit. This is going to be super interesting. <laughs> Just, I mean, so we we know that Odell is still getting open, right? Like, yep. all you have to do is watch the game. Baker Mayfield's missing him when he's wide open. But then also, we know that Baker Mayfield can hit deep passes because we saw Donovan Peoples Jones did this week. Like, there was just it was oil and water in Cleveland for whatever reason. Yeah, uh, I think both of these players are still good. I don't know. Odell is well on his way to wearing out his welcome in the league. He could sign with another team and have a fantastic year. Uh, but if he doesn't this year, this will be Odell had a good rookie season and has been a gigantic pain in the ass ever since. And yeah, I don't know. But also you, know- you look at Antonio Brown. Same thing there, and, he, and he's just absolutely lighting it up this year. So I don't know. I, I am feeling very schizophrenic about this one. Do you know what what team does a really good job of bringing in disgruntled wide receivers when you think that their career is absolutely over, and then rejuvenating them? And uh, Jets, <laughs> <laughs> the Mike White Jets. Yes, Clark. Well done. And then Jacoby Myers just never gets to score. Never, so Jacoby Myers will never people. score a touchdown. Never score a touchdown yeah. in his career. He will have like. 30,000 career yards. That's a lot, but they'll have a lot of the career yards, but never will score a touchdown. Yes. Uh, I really there, like, there's a part of me that wants Odell in, in, in New England. Give Mac Jones a, a legit number one receiver. Give it to it. Let's let's let make it happen. How funny is it though, that Jacoby Myers has entered the end zone three times, twice on two point conversions and one on a turn, a touchdown that was taken away. And he uh, scored in the preseason. Funny. This man, oh, okay. it, it, he he just cannot score a touchdown in a regular season football game, and it it makes it pains me. It it makes me so sad. The the chaos that would come of him going to Green Bay would be a lot of fun. Uh, Odell, I I really I I was a little sad that that I mean it makes sense. Jordan Love was thrown into like he clearly was not fully prepared for for the bright lights of a, of a you know, premier matchup against Steve Spagnuolo, who was just like, we're going to send the blitz all the time. And we're going to make sure you have to always know where Tyron Matthew is. Um, God, I kind of wish that he played a little bit better and that we could have had a, a brewing quarterback controversy in a, uh, in green Bay. That would have been, uh, and then if you throw the Odell in there and be like, we got Odell to help Jordan love, fuck you, Aaron. That would, what well, was funny. I, I started Jordan love in a two QB league. And I watched the first three plays of the game and his first two throws were like, there was like five yards between the ball and the receiver. <laughs> and I went, Oh he was no. Like, Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just needs to dial it in. He, he, he was making some good throws that once he, once he kind of got in the room, I mean, he, <laughs> <laughs> Nick just did an accurate representation of trying to catch a Jordan love ball. Um, excellent. Well, there you go. There's the news. Um, Before we turn our attention to week 10 and the rest of the season, I want to tell you, dear listeners, about our Patreon. Patreon.com slash NerdballFF. We have all kinds of perks for you uh, for those wishing to join, including our staff Discord channel where we talk football all year long, our Starts and Set hotline where you can ask us your most pressing Starts and Sets questions for a week, and uh, be able to submit questions to the podcast to be answered on any of the shows live. 
So if you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash nerdballff. All right, let's talk waiver wires and, and turn our attention to week 10. Uh, we're going to spice it up a little bit. We've been in the past just kind of giving a player who we like. I, I've tasked everyone, and I was telling Clark before we started the pod, uh, this is actually hard. <laughs> it's harder for me than I anticipated to actually pick who your top three waiver wire ads are for this week. But we are allowing overlaps, uh, and we are, are just it could be guys who we've already talked about. Um, but uh, Clark, why don't you start us off and give us your top three waiver ads for this week? Well, I'll start with the biggest and the best and probably the least owned, and that's Donovan Peoples-Jones. So owned in all of my leagues because I've been waiting for it. We've seen good stretches from Peoples-Jones in the past uh, when when he's gotten the opportunity when one of the Jarvis Landry or Odell Beckham have been injured. Had a really nice game this week, and I don't see why that's going to go away. You know, they have Richard Higgins still, and he might crop up, but 33% rostered in cbs leagues i'd definitely go pick him up the a couple more you know Ramondre stevenson is starting to get more run mm-hmm. i don't know if he's really someone that i would pick up and play but he's definitely an extra roster spot guy that if you know harris were to go down well then stevenson is like the number one ad and this is one of those like totally speculative maybe get out of it and then if you're struggling quarterback tyrod taylor the texans are going on a bye this week uh, he's only 30%, 36% rostered. Um, but then after the bye, the Texans are facing the Titans, the Jets, Indy, mm. Seattle, Jacksonville. Mm. And so those are some pretty, that's a pretty good stretch for a quarterback who you are going to get for free. There will yeah. be no competition for Tyrod this week. I like all those. Uh, Ramon J. Stevenson is a good guy to add to because as Damian Harris has, has already kind of dealt with, he had a rib injury earlier in the year. He, I know Ramondre Stevenson is also dealing with an injury right now, but Damian Harris is dealing with a head injury. Um, and so if he does miss time, we've seen Stevenson both very effective on the ground, but also as a pass catcher. Um, and so if he can lock down both those roles as a starting back, that is obviously great uh, for PPR and just fantasy in general. Uh, Nick, what are your, who are your top three waiver ads? Rank them, baby. Yeah, note, note, note on the last one, Stevens, both Stevenson and Harris are dealing with head injuries um but we don't know what their status is for week 10 um i like all of those recommendations so um waiver number one is elijah moore we have kind of talked about him uh on here for a couple weeks and i have on uh nerding out but they are starting to use him more effectively uh, the coaching staff did a couple weeks ago say, yeah, we recognize that we haven't been using him uh, properly and they're, they're starting to rectify that. It was really nice to see them scheme targets his direction. Um, yeah, he tied Keelan Cole with eight uh, for, for the team lead last week. And actually, I'm, let me check the, the running backs there because they might have. No, he, no, he, yeah, yeah he, so he, Keelan Cole led the, led the team. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the kid's really good. Um, he's young and I think that he had to, uh, learn a little bit. He had an early, uh, injury, but yeah, he, he's ready to rock. I don't know if you want to start him this week against Buffalo, but Miami, Houston, Philadelphia after that. Yes, definitely. Um, waiver wire pick number three is Naheem Hines have also been trying to highlight this, you know, in the rundown and, uh, and on nerding out, but what was going on in Indianapolis was the team was trying to, I, I don't know why they, they re-signed, uh, Marlon Mack after the Achilles rupture, they did. That was a mistake. And they, I think they quickly realized that and they tried to showcase him in the the weeks leading up to the trade deadline, which was uh, November 2nd. What we saw though, in the week before on, uh, on their Halloween game, when evidently the the Colts front front office realized, okay, no one's going to give us anything for the guy who, you know, is producing such sums of five carries for 16 yards, five carries for 12 and three for four. Who doesn't want Um, that for a six-round pick? Right. So they they have effectively kicked Marlon Mack to the curb at this point, which means that Naheem Hines, whose work was being taken away by Mack, like Jonathan Taylor's workload didn't move when Marlon Mack was seeing more work. Hines is now back to being a quote-unquote full-time player as both a rusher and a receiver. Uh, he needs to be rostered in all formats. Uh, last guy, D- uh, Devontae Freeman. This is a super ugly pick, but some teams n- desperately need a, a running back that they can just start due to bye weeks. Latavius Murray, uh, he suffered an ankle injury in week six, 
didn't play in week seven. They were on bye in week eight, and he came back after the bye last week and still could not practice. He didn't. He did not make a, a single practice participation. So Freeman has been playing as the lead guy there. He's getting work on the ground and through the air. Uh, Le'Veon Bell is not getting anything through the air. He's seen a little bit in the, a little bit of rushing work in the red zone, but I think over the last two weeks, uh, Devontae Freeman has five red zone touches and, uh, and Le'Veon Bell has three or, or rushes at least. Um, so Freeman is the lead back here. And again, he's, He's pretty washed, uh, but you don't have to be that great to play uh, running back. You have to you have to be able to do what the team asks of you, which is for him just grinding out some yards and and handling the rock and scoring position. Um, so for those who need Devonte, who who need a running back, you got to match up against Miami this week. I think you have a top thirty six running back if you need one. Yeah. Yeah, my my waiver list is going to look a lot like yours, Nick. Uh, my number one is well, we'll go we'll go we'll go three and up. Make the people listen, just because that's those are the overlaps. Number three, I have Devonte Freeman as well. Uh, I just I I was I went back and forth between him and Jordan Howard, but damn it, if I just Nick Sirianni is in my head, and I just don't trust it enough. Um, but both of those guys are are good ads. Devonta Freeman uh, took over the backfield this week, obviously, but in the before their bye. He had back-to-back touchdowns and back-to-back weeks. So uh, he, he is a part of this Ravens backfield. And we all know this Ravens backfield can be very potent. Um, and then number two is Elijah Moore. All of the preseason accolades we gave him, we're seeing them on display. The Jets are looking to get the football. I think Corey Davis's return will change it, change his kind of target share slightly. Uh, but what it might do more so is kind of bump out someone like Jameson Crowder uh, and Keelan Cole, and maybe we see a one-two punch of Corey Davis and uh, Elijah Moore. That being said, Corey Davis has not been on the field recently. Um, and then my number one is Rashad Bateman. If he's still available in your fantasy leagues, he has come in and has done nothing but produce for the Ravens. And all of this production is like gearing up for a breakout game to emerge shortly. Uh, he's seen at least six targets in every game he's played. I know against the Vikings, I think I saw somewhere someone tweet, and I, I wish I remembered who, but I think he was top 10 in air yards this week with over 100 yards. Um, he only finished with 52 yards, but they're looking to get him the football. He is just he is a vital part of this Ravens passing game and a Ravens passing game that has been pretty effective and been you know throwing the ball a lot. Uh, they get the Dolphins, the Bears, the uh, Browns, and then the Steelers, and then the Browns again over those next, what, five weeks. That's a great set of secondaries for him to go up against. And when he has his breakout game, his roster ship will skyrocket well past the 50% that it's roughly at now. So now is the time to get him. And, uh, and when he has that breakout game, he's already on your team and you are locked and loaded. So. Yeah. Ahead. I love all those. The only thing that was keeping Elijah Moore back was Zach Wilson. So. Yeah. Which is great. There is nothing you love more in like building a franchise than having a stud wide receiver being held back by your number two overall pick at quarterback. Jets are just even even when they try their best not to Jets, they still Jets. All right. Before we go, we are going to play a new game, a new segment. We're going to do true or false. We're going to cue some fun game show music and i am just going to rattle off five statements and clark and nick are very good very quickly no explanations just going to tell me true or false it's as simple as that simple as that uh let us begin hit the music and we'll start with the aforementioned devonta freeman is a white uh, is an rb2 moving forward clark true nick false Donovan Peoples-Jones is the Browns receiver to roster in fantasy over Jarvis Landry. Nick. False. Clark. True. Oh. <laughs> the mic, sp- the mic uh, crack there is perfect. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is back as a reliable wide receiver to weekly start. Clark. False. Nick. True. Oh, <laughs> will they agree? Uh, Alvin Kamara managers should be worried about his touches moving forward. Nick. False. Nick, Ooh, are you kidding? Are you come on, Trevor? Trevor Simeon. Come on, they, they can't true. agree. All right, our last one. Carson Wentz is a top six fantasy quarterback rest of the season. Clark. False. Nick. False. <laughs> there we and go. And we Thanks. get agreement. We have round of applause for everyone involved. We have agreement to wrap up the show. That's all we got for you this week. 
please rate and subscribe to the podcast on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, give us five stars. It really helps us get in front of people. And that's what we're all here for, especially our German listeners. Auf Deutsch. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at NerdballFF. You can follow myself at Peter M. Rogers. Follow Clark at NFL Clark and Nick at Ginger underscore underscore Nick without a K. And of course, make sure you check out all the amazing content that we're putting out over on the site at NerdballFF.com. Until next week, my fellow nerds.